Here's some uh, presidential election trivia for you. In 1972, Richard Nixon won with 60% of the vote and 520 electoral votes. Uh, that was a pretty big blowout, but it still wasn't as big a blowout as Johnson's uh, victory in 1964, which he won with 61% of the popular vote and uh, 486 electoral college votes. And uh, Reagan, of course, he had this 1984 blowout, a true blowout, uh, uh, although it's being inappropriately compared to the 2024 victory for Donald Trump. And in that one, uh, Reagan's victory, he got 525 electoral college votes, and that was a 58.8% of the uh, popular vote. Now, other honorable mentions, I think, in this group, maybe 52 and 56 for Eisenhower. Uh, he got uh, 55% and 58%. Uh, respectively, in those cases, and of course, uh, at least 400 electoral college votes in uh, both of those cases. Uh, but for the most part, all of those elections since Franklin Roosevelt, they've been really quite close. We're talking like 50, 51, 52 percent uh, at most in terms of the popular vote. And maybe the biggest winner in that period was 1988 with George H.W. Bush. He managed to break the 53 percent Barrier. The closest anybody came to that, other than 88, was uh, Obama in 2008, where he got, I think, 52.9%. Still didn't break 53%. Uh, for the most part, though, everything over the last 30 years, at least, has been very, very close. And in many cases, it wasn't even a majority of the popular vote. You had Clinton both times failed to get a majority. He got about, I think, 43% the first time and then 48% the second time. Then he had George W. Bush uh, with that whole razor-thin election in 2000, failed to get the popular vote there. Uh, 2004, still very close. We're talking 50, 51% in all of these cases. And Trump was no different with his 50.5% in 2024. Now, I know some people say, well, it doesn't matter. Whoever gets the majority of the Electoral College vote wins. Yeah, I get it. I get that the victor is the one who gets the most Electoral College votes. And that's fine. Uh, electoral College, good system. However, if we're talking about the issue of actual popularity, what we find is that the country is very, very divided uh, right down the middle. And uh, we will look in vain over the last 35 years to find some sort of overpowering consensus of any kind uh, that has existed in the United States. And this is important because we hear a lot of uh, rhetoric from pundits and media people talking about how uh, whoever the victor is has a mandate to rule and uh, people are coming together and there's some sort of consensus now. And all of that is nonsense. There's no evidence of any sort of consensus, no evidence of any sort of mandate. There hasn't been any sort of mandate for anybody since 1984. Really, what we've got are just every four years, a very close election, one after the other. And I, I, I think a lot of people don't really appreciate just how close these elections are and how little beyond 50 percent even the bigger victors are uh, able to. To get, And this has certainly been the case since 2000, all the more so, where you've got these really clear blocks, right? You've got the, the southern block of Republican votes. You've got the northeastern block. You've got the west coast. And you've got some of these midwestern states. You could, you know, western Pennsylvania, you could maybe call midwestern, that there's more debate there. And Certainly things have changed over time, right? Florida became a red state when it was evenly divided in 2000 and so on. But we can see these very clear blocks forming and that they prevent any sort of real breaking out beyond this 50-50 split, which is really where the United States is right now. But it's, it gets covered up, interestingly, by the Electoral College. The Electoral College has this interesting uh, propaganda effect. Now, I don't think this is why they picked the Electoral College as their preferred method at the Constitutional Convention. Uh, but it has been an actual side effect of the Electoral College. And the side effect is the Electoral College gives the impression that the winner has a bigger victory than he had, because people will then look at the Electoral College, they'll look at that map with all of the red or all of the blue on it, and they'll say, hey, look, look at all these regions that favored this person. But what the Electoral College, of course, never gives you are the details of how close 
were so many of the contests in, in various states. And this was true in 2024, of course, and true in most of the elections in the last 25 years. If you changed a few hundred thousand votes here and there in a small handful of states, you have a different outcome. That, that, that's not what I would call a mandate or some sort of consensus behind any particular candidate. But what the Electoral College does is, whereas the popular vote was, say, 50 percent, 51 percent versus 48 percent, that sort of thing, because you have to account for the the other uh, also rands, then uh, that's a big difference. That looks a whole lot closer than the Electoral College breakdowns, where often what you've got are a hundred vote difference, right, between the two candidates. In the in the bigger years, you've got 150 vote. You've got you've got a guy coming in to say 380 electoral college votes and far, far fewer electoral college votes for the other side. And that looks like a big stunning victory when you look at that. And so that actually helps the regime, interestingly, because it gives the impression that whoever won uh, is more popular than he really is, because the the reality of these presidential elections is they're extremely close. And uh, I would also say that it's not likely to change anytime soon. I don't see any fundamental difference, barring some sort of big revolutionary change, like a major financial crisis that that leads to some sort of radical decentralization, uh, constitutional convention, a secession movement, that sort of thing. Yeah, that will change things considerably. But for the time being, as things continue more or less in the way they have been uh, since 1945, uh, I think you can continue to have these very close elections, but in some cases, you're going to get a big electoral college victory, and then we can trust the media to talk about what a big blowout it was, and it wasn't even close, that sort of thing. The reality is the United States of America is very, very divided, um, 51%, 49%, and right around there. There's no consensus. We're all not going to be getting along anytime soon, so we'll see what comes next. <laughs> 